Okay, the time has come. I am like so excited. Today is the one year tasting of the spiced methaglin. This is like my favorite mead that I've ever made. So I know I'm setting the bar very high. This one really needs to be amazing or I'm gonna be a little bit disappointed. You might even cry. I probably won't cry, maybe later. I won't cry. I won't you might cry curse anymore. and we'll have to bleep it out. That might happen, yeah. Okay, so this was bottled on September 23rd, 2020. It is, uh, today is September 29th, 2021. So we're at one year, six days, but that's bottling. So this is like a year and three months, four months old already. It's 11.3% and let's crack it open. Pour some into a glass for the lady because that's what we do here, ladies first. Seeing some speckles in it. It smells all right. By speckles, I mean like sediment that got shaken up. Not a big deal. Clarity. Other than the speckles, it's very clear. It doesn't get much clearer than that. I mean, it's it's crystal clear. That is that is super crystal clear. So you can totally see my fingers through it. Super crystal clear. And what I actually think the speckles are is a bit of the proteins from the spices that was used. Mm -hmm. They Probably, rose to the top and yeah, formed a, a yeah. little bit of a surface area. Yeah, because yeah. it only happened when I poured it and only in yours. Do you want to trade? I mean, is it going to bother it you? It does not bother me at all. Okay. Color wise, it's a beautiful color. I mean, it's a wonderful color. It this, is a beautiful color. This is what mead is supposed to look like. But forget about its color. Just stick your nose in it. Oh, it's like angels are okay. singing to us. People are always asking, <laughs> can you guys make a pumpkin spice mead? Okay, no, I won't make a pumpkin spice mead because pumpkin doesn't ferment really well. However, this is as close to a pumpkin spice mead as you can possibly ask for. It's got all the spices that you use. Something was crawling on my leg. It's got all the spices that you use in making pumpkin spice. It just doesn't have the pumpkin in it. Instead, it's got honey and alcohol. That's better. <laughs> but the, the oh, scent is incredible. It it's is, all those flavors melded into one glorious thing. It is making me so happy right now. I, I Like, all the synapses are firing. And it's like <gasps> Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and presents and family and happy food and happy people and happy everything. Did you ever get one of those cinnamon witch brooms? Do you know what I'm talking about? They're like a broom made of... Yeah. Or you know the, how, you or know the how they smell? pine tones. Or that too. But do you know how those smell? And after like a week, the way they smell? Not right away, because right away it's overpowering. But after about a week, the way they smell. Now, if you mix that with some chai tea, that's pretty much what this smells like. Only about 10 times better. Unbelievable on the scent. Very, very aromatic. Like one of the more aromatic meads we've ever made. Yeah. And remember, in our top five each, this was my top. And that was then. That was when it was still new. Now it's a year old. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm getting ready. <laughs> if you are a long time viewer, you know that I love smelling things. I can smell things for an incredibly long time because she does. It's it's just it just makes me yeah. happy and I I would have to say, if I were to judge things on scent alone, this would get an 11 right now. Wow. All right, so we're gonna do what's called a short sip, where you put it in your mouth and you swallow. It is to acclimate the body to the alcohol. 11.3%, eh, eh, a little bit of acclimation is a good thing. And you can hear that we are really outside and we are really in a city. Let's just say it aged nicely. Ah, that was that was painful to to end, to swallow and to make it stop. Possibly the smoothest mead I have ever tasted. Right it's out just, of the gate, you're getting sweetness, you're getting spice, you're getting whoop. complexity and smoothness and Unbelievable. This is this is spectacular. But you guys knew this was gonna be good. <laughs> I mean, I was hoping it was. 
down here I'm like this, yeah. crossing my fingers, yeah. going, I hope like, this is good because oh, I built this one up. But this is bad. That's not good. But it is um, not. It is not even remotely. But yeah, sweetness and spice all coming through. Um, it's not overly sweet, and that's one thing. A lot of people thought that this one was too sweet. I would have agreed with you, except that all those spices help balance that down. Spices yeah. can be kind of bitter, yeah. and those spices without sweetness don't taste right. No. They have to have that sweetness. So I, I don't know about you, I'm ready for the long sip. Oh yeah. This is where you hold it in your mouth for a while and you really savor the flavors and get to explore it. Okay, I have one thing to say. Mine. <laughs> Unbelievable is is the first word that comes to mind it just it is so smooth so flavorful so rich in the mouth it just it fills your whole palate everything it's just so it's amazing it almost at first i'm like oh it's sweet and oh is that a little bit of citrus and oh, there's the spices and they're so wonderful and then at the very end, I think it's the combination of the swallow and the exhale. And we talk about that a lot. But my brain was like, incense. A little bit. A little bit. And I think it's it's kind of that smoky, but not smoky. Like when you breathe in incense and, and you can almost taste the spice. I do get a little bit of a smokiness incense. now that I, ne I never noticed on it before. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not. Let me, it's, let me just explore this and sure, go through it. Sure. On the entrance, I get honey sweetness right away. I can taste honey, and it, the honey character is there. It's it's undeniable, but it's not like you're drinking honey, okay? You just know there's a honey flavor. And then comes all the spices, and the cinnamon comes through first. A little bit of, I believe there's clove and allspice, and those are just like backing it up. It's like a musical group. You got cinnamon doing the lead, and then you have allspice and um, clove playing backup, while honey is like the stage that they're standing on. It's just a wonderful, wonderful little group going on there. As it starts to go further and you, you drink it down, I do get that tiny little hint of bitterness that I always get from mead, and that's just fermented honey. It's a flavor that I get. It's not unpleasant, okay? I'm not trying to correct it. A lot of people seem to think that I want to fix that. No, 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 no. That's, that's a good thing. It balances out the bit of sweetness. But at that point, the honey flavor comes back again. So I get honey in the beginning, honey at the end, and a fly the whole time. <laughs> he just likes us. I don't know. You know, we're in the back here. I think this might be the downside to sampling honey-based alcohol outside. Yeah, it'll attract some, some bugs. We're attracting some unwanted friends. I can live with it. It's okay. But the the exploration of the flavor is incredible. On the exhale, I get honey, touch of citrus, and that kind of bitter, uh, almost a, I don't want to say vanilla because it's not quite vanilla. It's a similar thing to a vanilla. Yeah, I'm getting the vanilla vibe. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, it's. And then after that, I'm getting the incense. <laughs> yeah. Now, food pairings. I don't know. I would have this with gingerbread, carrot cake. Apple pie. Apple pie. It's not really something to have with food so much, unless you were having like really rich foods. Um, like maybe a stew, but it would have to be like a really, it's reaching. I don't think so. Go away. Yeah, it's a, he's a big annoying one too. Huh, I'm I, super impressed. I, I really... My knee looks totally huge. <laughs> nice knee. Look at that. I mean, my hand is bigger than my face now. <laughs> All right, I gotta put my leg back. Um, but if I were given this, if I were given an opportunity to drink this, which I have a sneaking feeling I won't get much after this viewing, nope. I would want to drink it by itself. Yeah, I don't think I'd want this with food as much as I want to just drink it. Because it is so good. and I'm I, afraid to put this on I this. really don't want other things detracting from it or getting in the way for me appreciating this on its own. 
Yeah. And that's the truth of it. Normally, we like to pair things because they kind of play off each other and they elevate each other, the food and the drink. Where this is like, no, just, just this. Just more of this, please and thank you. Yeah, it's a rather selfish mead. That's what she's trying to say. I plan on being selfish with it. Sorry. It's, it's not right. often that I do that. It's all right. I'm pretty sure I drank all of the Klingon blood wine myself. Most of it. Like 95% of it. Yeah. So. You like that better than It's me. compromise. Yeah, it's part of life. I can let this go. And just steal little sips while he's drinking. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. But yeah, everything from scent to mouthfeel to swallow to flavor to exhale, everything about this is like spot on. Incredibly powerful. It's not aggressive, but it's powerful. There's a lot of flavor. It's not just a wimpy flavor or aroma. It's actually very strongly flavored in aroma. But like, you know how sometimes clove can almost be medicinal? Nope, it's just enough to be there. Yeah. Cinnamon can sometimes be overpowering and it yeah. just takes over. No. Nope, because I still taste the allspice and the clove and yeah. the honey. This so is like a perfect blended It just melded chai together tea. wonderfully well. Which is an oxymoron. I should just say chai, I know. But sorry. I said chai tea. It's okay. Chai means tea, for those that don't know. And if you did know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk down to you. Just I know not everybody knows that. So. So now we have the unfortunate task of putting a number on this. This is really hard. Masterpiece. Because here's the thing. Here's our numbering system. We have one, which is like probably toxic or possibly toxic, I should say. And I wouldn't give this to my worst enemy. Five means this is the point at which I would say, yes, I will have that. Below five, I'd go, I don't know that how much I want to drink today. You know, just not that interested. Ten is the glowing pinnacle of perfection, not just of the style, but of what we prefer in general. And obviously, these are totally biased scores. They mean absolutely nothing. You know, we made them up. But this is our impression of it, so that way it gives you an idea of what we like, and if you like the same things we do, then you might like something that we liked too. The problem is, I have given a couple of tens in the past. I think one of them was to the original version of one this. One of them was to the original of this. <laughs> and I cannot go back in time. Our TARDIS is not finished yet. Bearded and Board is trying to make one, yeah. and he's just not done with it yet. It's a joint effort. Yeah, but once he gets it done, then I can go back in time, and I can taste these side by side. Until I can do that, though, I'm going to guess this improved over the year. It, it ab absolutely improved over the year. It got smoother and just richer, and the depth is just... I mean, it's you call things an experience. Well, this is an experience but it's also an easy to drink thing. Like you could hand this to anybody that, that would like that kind of flavor and they're gonna go, wow, this is awesome. And then they're gonna say, this has alcohol. Yeah. Because you wouldn't know that there's alcohol. Yeah, it's it a doesn't sleeper. taste like it. <laughs> oh yeah, this one will knock you on your butt. But anyway, I have a score. I do as well. Are you ready? I'm ready. One, two, three, 10. 11. 10.5. Now, I did 10.5 on purpose because Brian had a premonition that this was going to 11, and he is 111% right. This is worthy of an 11. I did 11 was. because ours goes to 11. <laughs> I hate to. That was for you, Corey. I hate to break <laughs> rules and go past 10 because our scale is 1 to 10. But here's the thing this is one whole point above anything else that we have judged up to this point. Yeah, yeah. Hands down. One point above. It just really is. And the reason being is that this is beyond the wheelhouse. And I know we've mentioned the wheelhouse mm -hmm. before. This is Brian's wheelhouse. This is Derek's wheelhouse. This is this is beyond anybody's wheelhouse. This is trans... Transcendental. That word. I am immediately taken to my happy place. I don't even know what my happy place is. But wherever it is, they're serving that. For me, this covers everything that I like about mead okay it's got a little bit of alcohol to add some flavor and you know to make you feel good it's got 
the honey flavors, but not too much. It's got a little bit of sweetness, but not too much. It's got all the spices. It has the mouthfeel. It feels, see, here's the thing. Growing up, until I started actually drinking mead, I thought of mead as this thick, viscous stuff that they put in mugs, and it was like grog, okay? Kind of like if you thinned out oatmeal. That was the texture that I envisioned mead being. And I'm sure a lot of people think that way until they actually have some. And then they go, really? And commercial meads are either uber oversweet or uber over dry and bitter, and they're just not right. This one is the Goldilocks effect. It's not too sweet. It's not too dry. All the spices play well together. Everything about it just forms perfectly. But it still brings me back to that thick, rich, viscous stuff poured into a mug, being drank by a big blonde guy with braids down the half of his back. It still reminds me of that. In a more modern, clean, crisp, clear beverage that does not look the way it should taste. That's the thing. It doesn't taste as it looks. When you look at that, you go, oh yeah, it's just a meat. It is so much so more than much that. More. And I know we're like <laughs> fawning over this, but honestly, this is the best thing I've ever made. That bottle right there is the best brew I have ever made. Period. Hands down. Now, do you want to hear something sad? Oh, no. That's it. That's the last one. That's potentially the last oh, of its kind because somebody drank all the other ones. That doesn't mean we can't make more. This is true. Because you know what? I think we made a video where I have the whole recipe spelled out. People can yeah, do exactly we, what we, we did. We kind of do that. Yeah. That's why I don't take great notes because <laughs> I have records of it. As long as YouTube exists. And actually, as long as my backup drives exist, I still have yeah. all of my yeah. recipes. But wow. So we're not done yet. Nope. Now we have to do something a little scary. At least it's scary to me. This is almost blasphemous. Honestly. And I think it's scary to Brian is that we have to put this on ice. Yeah. Now and we say have to because I'm not sure I want to. We know that chilling an alcoholic beverage can change the flavor profile. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare that it doesn't change the flavor yeah. profile because the temperature is going to turn down some notes and turn up some other notes. Right. We like this so much as it is. It reminds me of a mold type of thing. Yeah. So I'm afraid that chilling it might take away. Yeah. So, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it. For you. For science. <laughs> Notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle torbando al riposo. What? Still smells good. The smell sometimes dissipates a bit as it gets cold. This one doesn't seem to be dissipating much, but it was a very strong ascent to begin with, so it is possible it'll stay. All right, I'm just going to go straight for my long sip do it. because we're already acclimated. We don't do short good. sips and stuff right, on the chill. Good. We just taste it. Decide if we like it or not, usually. It's pretty relaxed and casual when it comes to this aspect of it. That's not bad. I don't think it changed it all that much. It pushed my incense reaction closer to the front. Mm. I think it, it may have... Because I feel it like kind of in my throat, it may have enhanced the spice essence. Yeah, I was going to say that. It seems to have taken the honey aspect down in the front and brought the spices more forward. But I'm still getting the honey. Honey on the after and, and, and on, on the, the after. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, honestly, it didn't change it all that much. I think because it was such a strongly flavored beverage to begin with, it was really hard for the chilling to change it much. Yeah, I, I still... I don't know that it's an 11 anymore. I feel like I'm getting a different experience, mm -hmm. and I have to agree with Brian. I feel like I it's lesser. enjoyed the non-chilled version better. Yeah. I'm not disappointed, though. Cause no, I could I'm totally, going to say this is still a 10. I could drink that no problem chilled. Chilled, it's a 10. If I were just given the option, and it wasn't a hot day, and I wasn't outside, <laughs> yeah, I would probably prefer it not chilled. Yeah, but, but chilled, it's a 10. I, I wouldn't go to 11, but it, it's a 10. It drops a point. Yeah. But it's still, like, a, it's a 10. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's a 10. It's still, like, amazingly good. So, yeah, that's awesome. The only last note that I have is that is this is definitely a sweeter mead. But mm -hmm. I feel 
based on our palates, that that sweetness is required to balance out that really aggressive spice flavor. Oh, yeah. If this was less sweet, I don't think it would taste nearly as good. Right. Somebody and, made this dry and they said it was not good. Yeah, and I could imagine it would be a little painful if it was dry because yeah. that spice would just be... Ow! And nobody wants that. Now, right? the awesome thing is, this is a medicine mead. You know what that means? It's good for you. Yeah, it's good for you. Well, okay. Before we say it's good for you. Good for you. It has the spices in it. And sorry about the plane. They do that. Airports. You Airports, know. that way. Modern technology. What can I say? <laughs> um, before we say that it's good for you, it has spices in it that actually do good things to your body. However, alcohol, just full, full on disclaimer, alcohol in any amount is not actually a healthy thing. So yeah. no matter what anybody tells you, it's just not. It's bad. Okay? Do it in... Do it in moderation to your discretion and just know that it's not good for you. So it to me, it's like my only vice. I don't drink a lot, but when I do drink it, I want to make it something that I like. That's why we don't brew for high alcohol. We don't brew for like crazy ABVs. We brew for flavor because if I'm only going to get to have one drink, I'm going to make sure it's something that counts, you know? And if flavor is king, we know who's wearing the ground. Oh, heck yeah. This stuff. The Spice Methaglin, one year aged unbelievable i want to make another batch of this and leave it for three years can you wait that long we'd have to put it at your parents or something <laughs> Meet our lock and key and i only Let's get, we can get a safe deposit box <laughs> and put it in there and tell them don't open it for three years and we'll come back in three years and open it but anyway until that happens if you like this video look up there's another one up there you might like that one too thanks for watching have a great day